is the truth? Where do we find the truth? In the word of God. That's where we find out what truth is. This is where we find out if our theology lines up with God's truth. Are aware of this? A couple of you may not be, but we are trying to uh, learn um, a brief passage uh, that connects in with our theme uh, this this series, uh, how to build your life on God's word. And what we are doing is, is we are uh, memorizing Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six and seven. And the way that we're doing it is, is each and every week we say it two times uh, at the beginning of the message time. Uh, the first time, all the information is on the screen, and the second time, as the series has progressed, we keep getting rid of more words, and so there are more blanks on the screen. And the hope the hope is that we can fill in these blanks. And if not, it's always in your bulletin. <laughs> Um, so if you want to peek inside of that or the Bible that you have brought, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. But we uh, share the address at the beginning and the end. The address is Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. So would you please join me uh, in, in reciting these verses. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them. And, sorry. <laughs> And when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. Apparently, I don't have it memorized quite as good as I thought I did. So let's do it again, right? Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you lie at home or sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. Wow, am I glad that we have two more weeks to get this figured out. Please check out this video. Hi, my name is Kurt. I've been asked to answer the question, why do I go to church? Uh, well, the short answer is that when I was uh, a young kid some years ago, my dad said, a man belongs in church on Sunday morning. And it stuck. That's just how it is. Uh, beyond that, uh, when I was 17 years old, I put my faith in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, I started reading the Bible because somebody told me I should, uh, and they were right. And I came across this passage in uh, Hebrews, in the New Testament, Hebrews 10, what, 24, 25. Uh, Do not neglect meeting together as the habit of some is, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So I have determined not to neglect meeting with one another, meaning church folk like y'all, presumably. Um, I find that there are probably three identifiable benefits and many others um, besides the food sometimes at gatherings. Uh, but never mind about that. Uh, accountability. It keeps me honest. When I know that I'm going to show up at church on Sunday morning and sort of open myself to questions, uh, from other people, there is some degree of accountability with that. Keeps me on the straight and narrow, such as it may be. Um, assistance. You know, the basement flooded one time, and who did I call? You know who you are. A couple of guys from the church and said, hey, guess what? I have an opportunity for you to succeed. My basement flooded, and I need you here with your mop and your bucket and your squeegee and your rubber boots. And they did. Uh, and third is the association. Uh, with people who are like-minded. Uh, we love the scriptures. Uh, we love the Lord. Um, we associate in small groups with each other. The small groups is really the benefit, I think, of going to the church here. Uh, and it's just fun. Uh, it's fun to have a group of people that I can meet with and we can talk and we can be friends with. And I can get a ride to town when I need one when the car doesn't work, uh, which happens every once in a while. <laughs> I enjoy attending the Benton Church for several reasons. I think it's very important to have my family, young kids especially, exposed to other Christians and like-minded Christians that are teaching the Bible and, and the gospel at a young age on a consistent basis. And having those relationships at church and, and looking forward to seeing those people every week is really nice. I enjoy Pastor Justin's sermons. They are Bible-based. Uh, they are at times entertaining, kind of like a race car drag race where you don't know sometimes what he's going to say that's going to totally derail 
this sermon, but it, it does usually work out in his favor, and, and I, I do enjoy those Bible-based sermons week in and, and week out. And I always enjoy my one cup of cappuccino every week on Sunday as well. And it usually works out. I forgot everything else that was said in those videos, uh, except that it usually works out, and how I am derailing sermons uh, each and every week. And so hearing that, I immediately thought, well, let's derail this baby right away. Can we do that? Can we just head off in a different direction? Now, I wrote name that jingle, but but instead of naming that, here's what I want us to do. I want you to finish the jingle. So I'm going to start a jingle, and and if you know it, join with me uh, to try in trying to finish it. So if I were to start by saying nationwide is <laughs> thank you to the singers um, keep it up right the rest of you it's like I'm not singing I already did that during the church service okay so you have the idea of what it means to to finish the jingle or name that jingle right so if somebody were to say ba da ba 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 and what's that for yeah, just a little interesting side bit of information. The person uh, who was hired to to write that jingle was good friends with a guy named Justin Timberlake. And he invited Justin to come and say, hey, would you just sing the jingle for it? And he's the one who ended up singing the jingle for that commercial. Ah, I'm sure that'll come in handy at some point in your life. So put that in your head. Okay, so, so let's keep going. Like a good neighbor. <laughs> yeah, State Farm is there, right? Frosted Lucky Charms there. Magically delicious. Yeah. I mean, we know these things, don't we? Uh, so, so this one goes way back, but some of you will get it right. The best part of waking up is... Wow, we've got a lot of coffee drinkers from the 70s and 80s here today. That, that's, that's what I'm hearing in this, right? Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that. Yeah, fancy feast. You are correct. Or at least those who have watched The Office, you probably know why I just said what I said. <laughs> okay? So what would you do with a... Klondike bar. Can't you sing this with me, people? I feel like I'm alone here. Yeah, but we know all these things, right? So, Limu, Emu, and Doug. Right? I gave you one where you didn't even have to sing, and then you didn't know it. So, so, so what is that for? It's for what? Liberty, liberty, liberty. Liberty. Yeah, it is. We all have these jingles that are in our heads. Well, what's, what's a jingle? I mean, what, what really is this? Well, it's just this really simple phrase or song or ditty that, that businesses will use, organizations will use to try and get something into our brains so it becomes a part of the way that we are thinking, especially when something like breakfast cereal or, or breakfast beverages or when I need insurance, who am I going to go to? Probably Limu, Emu, and Doug, or something like that, right? It's a part of who we are. And, and because of all of these ditties that, that go on, we are barraged with this stuff all the time in our lives. And, and here's the reality, is the, 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 the jingles that we hear, the things that we are barraged with in regards to information in our lives, it becomes so overwhelming in who we are. That, that I believe that we all get to the point where sometimes we're not sure what is going to be best or, or what is right for us. Let me give you an example. If I were to start singing, Coke is it the biggest taste you've ever found? Coke is it the one will never let you down? You know what I'm talking about? How many of you know the, the Coca-Cola song from years ago, right? So, so here's my guess, is my wife listened to that song and she started thinking, Coke must be it. That must be the right beverage, uh, the soda of choice for my life and for my future husband. And we all know that Coke isn't it, right? It's Pepsi. We know that Pepsi is the right choice. She has been duped into believing that Coke is the right beverage, and we all know that it isn't. <laughs> okay, so that's Dr. Pepper, right? I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper. <laughs> yeah, no, I like Pepsi. I don't want to be a pepper too, right? Sometimes the things that we hear can confuse us into understanding or knowing what is right and what is wrong. 
And friends, that's what this whole message series has been about, is, is helping us to realize that God has given us something that we are to be building our lives on, that this is the thing that we are supposed to be putting into our heads. This is the thing that's supposed to be just bouncing around in there so that this is what comes out of us as we live our lives. And we've started off talking about uh, that, how we need God's word, right? And that, we, that it would be good for us to listen and study God's word. And today we get into the word meditate. And we are going to be looking into Psalm chapter 1, or, or the first psalm, and then we're going to be heading to Philippians 4, 8. And I, you know, as, as I was reading through this, I, I started asking myself, why in the world is this the first psalm? I, I hope you ask questions like that when you're reading the Bible. Why is this one placed here? And the, the best thing I could come up with is because this paints a picture of how how important it would be to continue to read from the book of Psalms or to continue to read from the book. Lord, help us as we begin to, to understand a little bit more about what your word means to us. God, open our eyes uh, to, to the idea of meditating. May the words that I share and the things we all hear, God, be acceptable and pleasing to you, for you are our rock and our blessed redeemer. Amen. So let's start digging in uh, with Psalm 1. And it starts off by saying, blessed is the one. So we have to stop right away to say, so, so what is this idea of blessed? Well, the main definition for it is just simply happy, right? And we all understand what happy or happiness is. As a matter of fact, in the United States, it's kind of like this is a part of our DNA. If we were to think back to the 1700s, uh, you know, one of the things that the, that the founding fathers, the founding people of our nation would do is, th is they wrote this into documents that became a part of who we are. I mean, think about the Declaration of Independence and that, that popular, popular sentence in there that starts off by saying, we hold these truths to be self-evident. What, what does that mean? That means this is obvious to all of us who are here, right? And here's what's obvious. We're all created equal, right? And we are endowed by our creator. So in other words, the creator God gave us this certain special gift, the certain thing that we are supposed to, it's just a part of who we are. It's not what that we're supposed to have, it's what we have. It's who we are, right? And, and that includes certain uh, with unalienable rights. And so these aren't optional things for us. These are mandatory parts of who we are. And that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of it is embedded in our nature that we are a people that, that, that believe that we should be happy. We should be able to experience joy in our lives. And so that's what we think. But here's my question, and it's been my question throughout this entire series. That's great. But what does God's word say? And when God talks about the word happiness or blessed... What he is actually doing is he's talking about that in relationship with another. And, and most often in scripture, it's talking about our relationship with God as God is in relationship with us. And so now we have the idea that our happiness now is connected to a relationship. It's not just something that I deserve to have. It's connected to this relationship. What does Psalm 1 say? Who are the blessed people? Who are the ones whose relationship only seems to be getting better because of? Well, it's the ones that is blessed is the one who, and we start to hear these negative things. And so it, it isn't these people. So blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the way of, of that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. And so the first thing that I hope we all see here is, is that there's this very clear action that happens with each and every one of us every single day. You know, so, so imagine that, that, you're, that you're walking, imagine that you're standing, and imagine that you're sitting, which is pretty much all that we do, right, during the day. And so, so now imagine in those actions, what is your behavior? What are the things that you are doing while you are standing, while you are sitting, right, while you are walking? Because here are the ones that aren't experiencing the blessing, the happiness, this joy in the, in, in the ever-increasing relationship with God. It's the ones who walk in step with the wicked. So what does wicked mean here? Well, wicked means that you're willing to violate 
the law, that you're willing to, to break the law. And what's the law that, that Psalm 1 is talking about? God's law. So we will not experience the, the strengthening, the blessing of the relationship with God in the full form that we are designed to be if we're willing to just violate God's law. We, we will not, if during the day, we're, we're willing to see what sinners are doing. Now, the word sinner means people who are missing the mark, right? God has the standard that he, that, it, that he calls all of us to live in, right? Because it's what's best for us and our relationships with others. This is one of the things that causes the blessing around us, is that we live as God is calling us to live, and, and, and if there are people who are sinning, who, who are, the, the, have some sort of understanding of God's law or, or even don't, and, and they're just choosing to live outside of the way that God is calling us to live, right? That's not what God says is best for us. And, and so we won't experience the, this, this strengthening of the relationship with God if, if we're willing to just stand with other people as they're doing the things that they're doing, or maybe that also cause us to be doing the things that they are doing. And the psalmist then says, or, or sit in the company of mockers. Now, the idea of mockers is people who are just teasing, making fun of, thinking that it's not what, that, what they're doing is, is not super important is the idea. Now, if we tie that to, to what the blessing is, the strengthening relationship with God, so, so now what we're doing is, 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 is are we sitting with or are we a part of the group of people that are looking at others who are doing what God is calling us to do and we just kind of shake our heads or we think they're silly or they're too different or I can't do that. And if we are doing those things, then what we are doing is, is we are sitting in the company of mockers. And so, so the, the psalmist, he just comes right out in front and he just kind of like hits us on the head and says, do you want to know who's blessed? It's not these people. It's, it's this different group. And the different group is the one who delights in the law of the Lord. You know, the one who, who will, will, will just take this and experience the joy of what it is. I got to get me some of God's word is the idea. And follows that up with, and who meditates on his law day and night. So now we get into the key word of the day, meditate. Well, what does it mean to meditate? Well, meditate, it, it, it actually literally means that we imagine the action. All right, so do you hear that? Imagine the action. So now, the one who imagines the action of God's law day and night. It's these people that are, that are looking at what God's word says, and they're imagining what that would look like if I were to live it out. The, the image that was often used with the word meditate for the people is the idea of a lion who is over its prey that it has just captured, and it is roaring with excitement. Why? Because I'm about to dig into this meal. I mean, that's the image of what, the, what meditating is. I am imagining that I'm about to rip this thing open and I'm going to dig in. And we all probably have that meal, you know, or, or a couple of meals where if we start thinking about it, I hope some of you it's chilly because today we're going to be digging into those meals, right? Uh, but, but for some of us, we just think of this meal and it'll cause us to start to drool a little bit. Um, we, we become so excited, so in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, a couple of months, uh, my family and I were planning a trip to Oklahoma City. We're, we're going to go down there and we're just, just going to try and have some fun. I've been to Oklahoma City a couple of times. And there is this one place called Nick's Grill that I believe has the absolute best hamburgers I have ever experienced in the world. It's this tiny little dive place. I heard about it on Diners, Drives, and Dives. That's where I first heard about it. Where there's room for only 16 people to sit down. But, but they will have lines of people. They're only open 11 to 2 each day. And they will have lines of people that go up to two blocks long. People waiting to come in to try Nick's Burgers. Oh my goodness. 
the, the two times that I've been to this place, I'm sitting there at the counter and the place just smells gloriously like, like uh, burgers that have been cooked in onions. If you, if you know the smell, and I'm not talking the White Castle smell. This is way better than that, right? And, and I sit there and I look over the burger. And if you're looking at the burger on the picture, right, it's, it's a half a pound burger. And I think there's like a quarter pound of bacon on top of that. Oh my goodness. We're hitting all the animals that I love to eat and in, in just one one basket. And I get super excited and I literally start drooling over this thing. And I just dig in and, and all the juices and the fat and stuff's rolling down my arms. Ah! You know, anybody tries to get close to me and, and it's busy in that place. I, I will literally start growling at them because I do not want them to touch my meal. Do you get what I'm talking about? Because that's the image of what the psalmist is telling us. We should be looking into God's word with that much passion, that much excitement, that much enthusiasm. And if I could be honest, I have a hard time most of the time digging into God's word with that much passion, with that much energy. There are times where where I do, but then there are a lot of times where I don't. And I'm guessing there's a lot of people who, who are listening, or who are here today, who, who are experiencing the same thing in their lives. Where we just have a hard time making this that important in our lives. And if you're like me, you can come up with reasons or excuses. I'm so busy. I get up early and I go to bed late and, 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 and I don't, I just don't know if I have time or what I have time to do is really just is spend some quick stuff here, which of course all of that is great but not what the psalmist is telling us. It's this challenge to, to, to look at what are we meditating on in our lives. And, and, and I'm thinking that, that you know, God's word is one of those things that I occasionally really meditate on outside of making sure that I'm ready to talk to you all on a Sunday morning. And what would it look like if, here's the thing that I was thinking about this week, what would it look like if... Bill Gates all of a sudden came to me and said, Justin, for every verse in the Bible that you memorize, I'm going to give you $10,000. Would that change the thing I meditate on each and every day? You know, and I know this is one of those silly, ridiculous, uh, you know, examples that probably won't happen. Bill Gates, if you're watching, I'm willing to do this. Right, But it probably won't happen. But the psalmist is reminding us of how important God's word is. And are we willing to feast on it? Because it is worth far more, God's word reminds us, of any precious metal. Gold, silver, anything. And I think we would all acknowledge that it's far more important than any of that stuff. And yet we get caught up with other things. And we meditate on different stuff. The psalmist is saying, may we be people that that start to just dig in to God's word. That we are imagining, acting out God's word. Delights in the law of the Lord. Meditates on it day and night. As you're wandering through the day, you're thinking about something that you had heard or read uh, in God's word. And you're thinking, so how could I live that out? What would be the action I could do right now in order to live that out? Because that person, the psalmist said, is like a tree who's planted by a stream of water, yields its fruit in season, right? Its leaves do not, not wither, which is the idea of, the, of when things are out of season or a drought is happening. You know, it's the leaves of the person who, who's investing in God's word, they will still be green. They will still be doing their purpose. And whatever they do prospers. He began to see this picture that meditating on Scripture will provide us with blessing and delight. That this is how we experience the strengthening relationship with God. And may that be our blessing. Check this out. Why do I do devotions? It's a great question. I'd love to tell you. One of the things that has helped me in the last few years in, in being more consistent with devotions is an app called First Five. It lets me set reminders 
to say, hey, do your devotions. Um, I find that the days where I do do devotions, they just seem to be better days. Um, I think taking the time, focusing on God and, um, and being in his word really helps my attitude, um, helps give me a better perspective on what really is important and maybe the things that are just not so important. So I guess, you know, if you have a devotion plan that works for you, that's awesome. But if you like me kind of struggle, um, and you think this app might be something you want to check out, come see me. I'd be happy to share it with you and, and see if it's something that might work for you. I spend time in the morning um, reading my Bible and being in prayer because I just feel like it sets my intention for the day and allows me to just pray anything that's on my heart that I'm feeling anxious about and just give the whole day to the Lord. Um, but it's something I try to do every morning when I can, um, but it's something that's really special to me and it's special time with me and the Lord and um, something that I couldn't do without. So the psalmist then continues and just starts talking about, again, the comparing or the contrasting of these two people. And we start to see the people that, that aren't willing to dig into God's word, that aren't willing to spend some time thinking about how I can act this out during the day. He says, not so the wicked. And who are the wicked? It's the people who are willing to disobey or the people who are disobeying. Right? Breaking the law, violating the law. And so not so the wicked. These people are like chaff that the wind blows away. So, so what's chaff? Well, if you, if you have any idea of how, especially, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago, how they would get the grain separated from all the useless stuff of the stock, uh, what they would do is they would, they would make these winnowing forks, which were made of a long uh, piece of wood. And then on the bottom, they had some tines, uh, sticking out of it. A lot like a pitchfork is today. And they would find a very hard or smooth rock surface. And they would take all of the grain and they would pour it onto this. Uh, and then they would grab it with the winnowing fork and they would shake it and then they would lift it and they would throw it up in the air. And all of the, the useful stuff that would be used in order to turn into flour, to bake bread or whatever, all of that stuff was heavier and it would fall right to the ground. And all of the stuff that was useless in, in, in making it for food would start blowing away in the wind. And so after doing this for a, for a, 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 an amount of time, what you had left on the ground w was mostly the stuff that was going to be useful for you. And so you have this idea of what they're talking about when it says chaff. And if we get back to it, it says, so the wicked, the people who are willing to, or the people who are violating God's law, the people who are just ignoring it and just choosing whatever they want, they're like the chaff of the wind that blows away. Useless. The people who aren't digging into God's word, the psalmist says they're useless. And, and, and I'm not trying to beat us up or anything like that. What I'm trying to do is to help us understand what God's word says and how important it is. Not like the chaff that just blows away. Therefore, uh, the wicked, the ones who are just okay with or are violating God's law, you will not stand in the judgment. The wicked people will not stand. Now, the word uh, stand here, it means to be confirmed, that some sort of judgment could be taking place. It very well could be the, the judgment when Christ comes again. Uh, you know, we don't exactly know for sure, but that some sort of judgment is going to take place where, where all of us, but especially those who have said, yeah, I, I hear the God stuff, I, I, but it's, it's not for me. I'm too busy or whatever. Um, you know, that, that at some point we will be standing before God and you will not, your lives will not be confirmed that's the type that God wants us to have. Whew, this is challenging stuff to hear, right? Nor will, will the sinners, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Now, some scholars believe this is just talking about the, 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 the body, the followers of God. And in, in, in how the, the, there's people in the church, if we want to use today's uh, language, there are people in the church who will be able to look at you or you'll be able to look at me and you'll know if I'm really somebody who is meditating on God's word or not. Or uh, am I missing the mark or am I not? The people around us will know. They're going to know. They're not going to know. They're going to know. 
All right, some of you won't get that. Talk to your kids around you, okay? But there's this idea that, that God is going to make sure that we are, are, are judged based on, are we going to be people that are going to live the way God calls us to or not going to live the way that God calls us to? So the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Now we start getting back to the one who is planted, the tree that is firmly planted in the ground. And, and, and what is God doing for those that are planting themselves in the ground where God wants us by that stream of, of living water, we would call it today? Well, God's watching over them. It literally means God is guarding them. God is guarding us, uh, the, those who are willing to and choosing to live the right way that God has. But the wicked, their way leads to destruction. I, I really like one of the things that, uh, that Chuck Swindoll uh, once said. You know, he's this noted speaker and author and does a, a, a daily uh, everything. I mean, this, this, this guy I think is really, really brilliant. And one time he was talking about ch- just trees and, and referencing Psalm 1. And, and he said, he said the, the, the strength of the tree is not bark. It, it, it is not leaf. It, it is not branch. It is not fruit. The strength of the tree is its roots. And where are you placing your roots? Because that is what's going to be your strength. And that's what the psalmist is doing in Psalm 1. He's reminding us, where are you going to place your roots? Because that's going to be your strength. What are you willing to sink your teeth into each and every day? Because that is what you are, is going to become who you are throughout your life. Check this out. Yeah, the small group thing, we, we absolutely love um, coming in and collaborating with other, other couples, uh, with other people, just to see what experiences they're having. It's one thing to go to, go to church and kind of take on that, that big message and then digest that with your spouse afterwards. But then coming into a small group, uh, having those questions that are asked and it's more of an intimate setting where you just have a few other uh, people in the room that are dealing with the same things that that you are um, and so small groups are really important in that aspect just to just to talk them out work them out and then hopefully the application process then thereafter and then there's some accountability that comes along with that too uh, you talk about it as a group and then the next week you come right back into it and say hey gosh you know you said that you were going to work on that this week how did that go for you and then having someone hold you accountable to that too has been really impactful for me and my relationship um, and I think that's what we're, we're called to do uh, with the Bible right and what Jesus tells us to do is is uh, try to learn and, and, and be better um, and, and iron sharpens iron you know we're in here all learning the same things trying to trying to get a little bit better and then ultimately lead others to, to Jesus Christ I've always enjoyed being a part of a small group. I like the opportunity to get together with others in the church, get to know people, uh, learn together, and hold one another accountable. Uh, for me, in the smaller setting, I like being able to share, you know, my own thoughts and get that real-time feedback, uh, and also, uh, you know, hear other people's perspectives and and insights. Uh, to me, that's that's been really beneficial over the years. Uh, Hebrews ten twenty four says, "And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds." And to me, that's what we're doing in a small group. Sometimes I'm the person being spurred, and sometimes I have the opportunity to be uh, the spurrer. But either way, uh, you you get to grow closer with one another as you grow closer with Christ. And and to me, that's that's what church is all about. And uh, I'm very very appreciative for. Um, the people that I've had in small groups over the years. I think it's been um, a very beneficial thing for me. If you aren't hearing the infomercial yet, it's that there's value with gathering together with one another and just looking into God's word. It's taking this time to meditate and dig in. The other passage that was read today was the verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And, and, and Paul is just trying to remind the people at the church of Philippi, you know, you know, he shared a whole bunch of stuff with them, you know, things that would be helpful and good for them to do. And then he goes to this verse, and I think it's really interesting because, because this verse isn't necessarily a, a, necessarily a list of things to do. But it's just a reminder of, of what could be the things that, that we, just as we go through life, can be meditating on. Right? And Paul says, so, so finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think 
on these things. And it's, and it's this challenge for us to, to, to just pause and ask ourselves, what am I thinking about right now? You know, you, you're in the midst of your day. I, I hope that this question would come up where you would just say, wait, what am I thinking about? Or what am I watching? Or what am I doing? And, and is it one of these things maybe? I, you know, I don't know. And, and, and consider if it's the opposite, Right? Brothers and sisters, uh, whatever is true, is the thing that I'm listening to, do I know if it's the truth or not? Do I know if it's a lie? Is it noble? Is it, is it an honoring thing or is it a dishonoring thing? Right? Is it right? Because there is right and wrong. And, and friends, we don't get to decide what that is if we're followers of Christ. Jesus lets us know through God's word what is right and what's wrong. Is what I'm thinking about, is what I'm doing, is it pure is it lovely or, or is it ugly? I don't know. Would somebody admire me for the things that I'm doing or, or wouldn't they? As Paul says, think about these things. And may in our heads, we, be, we tie this back to what the psalmist was saying, where he says, if you're wondering what to do with your day, tear into God's word and imagine what it would be like to act that out. Now, some of you might be here and you're thinking, uh, Justin, I, I hear you and I, and I understand and this is super challenging for me to, to hear because, because I'm struggling with this or this isn't something that I've really been doing in my life. How do I start? Great question. I, I encourage you all to take out your phones right now because I'm, I'm going to put a slide up on the screen. And crosswalk.com. Uh, you know, it's, it's this online Christian living magazine where it's just, you know, helping people to, to, to live for Christ. Well, they did, they did a review of, of on Google of all of the scripture verses that were mem- or that, that were, that were most often searched for uh, this last year in 2022. And, and they came up with a list of, of the top 10 scriptures that people were looking for. And I encourage you, just pull out your phone, take a picture of this, because if you're wondering, where do I start? You know, hopefully some of you are thinking, I, 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 I want to dig in. I, I want this to be like a meal for me. And, and so maybe there's something, some things that I should memorize from God's word, which is why we're doing it during this series, right? Maybe these are 10 verses that you could start to memorize. The, the first one is one that a lot of us know anyway. Um, so that might be a helpful start. And you, if you're one of those people that likes to check off a list, bing, done. It could be a, a, just a positive thing for you. But the thing that I found interesting in the article was when they were talking about, as, as they looked through the verses that people were looking for, was there a common theme? And it says on the bottom, several themes connected with the popular Bible verses were connecting with God, living with purpose, and finding strength. And I read that and I thought, that's what I want. I, I want to be somebody who is connecting with God. I want to be somebody who's living with purpose, and I want God's strength in my life. And I can't tell you how often I, I, I you know, I, I just realize that that's not what I'm experiencing, and it causes me to go back to Him and surrender. Because what we're sinking our teeth into is really what what's going to be important to us. Let me let me try to. Uh, to give you an example of that here. So as best you can see, and and I know that it's kind of difficult to do so, and I don't want to ruin electronics, so I'll just move that one over there. But you will see that I have three different things in here, right? I mean, you can kind of see that there's there's different stuff in in each and every one of them. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it with with the rail that's on the front of this. And and here's all I want to do. I am going to take this sponge, and I'm going to put it in this liquid. And I'm going to hold it up, and I'm going to wring it out, and I want you to tell me what you think it is. All right? This isn't anything tricky, right? Nothing's going to change color, and there is nothing up my sleeve. But but just, just watch this and tell me. Just tell me, what do you think this is? Would I waste Pepsi by putting my hand in it? Is anybody even listening to the things that I say? It is actually a combination of Coke and Dr. Pepper. Ha! I love it. 
What do you think this is? Now watch it. It's lemonade. That's all it is. Nothing fancy. Now what do you think this one is? It's water. See? Nothing tricky. Nothing fancy. But here's the thing that I want you to realize. If I keep putting this sponge into something that nobody should drink, (laughs) and that sponge gets squeezed, what's going to come out? The thing that nobody should drink. Exactly. No matter how many times I put this in the lemonade and then squeeze it out, it is always going to be lemonade. Friends, the question then becomes, what am I soaking myself in? Because no matter what it is, when things get squeezed, that's what's going to come out. Lord Jesus, thank you so much just for reminding us of the truth of your word and really how important it is. Jesus, I have admitted here in front of people that I catch my my mind thinking and wandering about different things. And today I just stop and say, Lord, forgive me when I've not been living for you. Forgive me for when I've been doing my own thing. And help me to be somebody who will dig into your word. Help me, as, as the word is today, to meditate on this, God. And help all of us, God, to, to be people. <laughs> that the, the juice that comes out of us is you and what your word says. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's message. We hope you found it both encouraging and helpful. If you did, please click the like button and share with your friends. If you want to hear when new messages are posted, please subscribe to the Benton Church. We also invite you to join us on site for worship. We're located in Benton, Kansas, just east of Wichita. Our Sunday services start at 1030 and our doors are open to everyone. For more information, please check out our website at thebentonchurch.org. What do you know about God? He loves us. He died for our sins. He helps us. He's powerful. And He loves you.